Fergus has been working on me for a long time, gently, gently persuading me to come and share in the service. So thank you, Fergus. Thank you for to Divine Healing Ministries because I owe an awful lot to the ministry. I think my connection is probably coming up in 20 years whenever we spoke to Brother David and along with Brother David and Joan and others came to First Lisburn where I was deaconess and trained a team of people and well that team is still going on. They were away for a retreat day today. So it is, I count it a real privilege to be involved in this ministry and to have more time now to be involved in that. I want to focus tonight on going deeper with God and about really having that desire, that longing and that thirst to really know God, to know so much more. It's apparent from research that most plants that are planted deeply have the capacity for a, a new root system along the buried stem, giving it a big advantage in terms of really producing um, really beauty and fruit and everything else. In the warm weather that we had during the summer, it was suggested that people didn't cut their grass because if it wasn't cut, then it would go itself, they would go right down in and find nutrients and find water. I thought that was extremely interesting. And how amazing is God's creation? I have a garden that at one point in its life was part of a big estate. And whenever you go to try and dig a big hole, it's practically impossible. Because there's all sorts of debris and rubbish and stuff that has been there for years and it's hard to clear it. So you just go to another part of the garden and dig another hole. <laughs> but you know, that's sometimes like in our lives, how so many things debris can get in the way and can block our spiritual growth um, and hinder us going deeper with God. There is a, a, a real strong calling as we look at scripture and there's that strong calling to go deeper in our relationship with God, to have that longing for him, to have our focus on him and not allowing other things to get in the way. And the way has been totally opened for us in and through Jesus. Jesus has done it all and he has given up everything for us. I want to first of all focus tonight on a passage of scripture from Exodus and it's Moses, one of Moses' encounters with God. Um, Exodus 33, reading from verse 12, the title of this passage says, Moses sees the Lord's glory. Moses said to the Lord, you've been telling me, take these people up to the promised land but you haven't told me whom you will send with me. You call me by name and you tell me, I have found favor with you. Please, if this is really so, show me your intentions so I will understand you more fully and do exactly what you want me to do. Besides, don't forget that this nation is your very own people. And the Lord replied, I will personally go with you, Moses. I will give you rest. Everything will be fine for you. Then Moses said, If you don't go with us personally, don't let us move a step from this place. If you don't go with us, how will anyone ever know that your people and I have found favour with you? How else will they know that we are special and distinct from all other people on the earth. And the Lord replied to Moses, I will indeed do what you have asked, for you have found favor with me, and you are my friend. Wow, how powerful is that? Then Moses had one more request. I just think, I love this, that yes, he had got what he wanted, that God was gonna go with him and with the people, 
but here's one more request. Please, let me see your glorious presence, he said. The Lord replied, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will call out my name, the Lord, to you. I will show kindness to everyone I choose, and I will show mercy to anyone I choose. But you may not look directly at my face, for no one may see me and live. The Lord continued, Stand here on the rock beside me. As my glorious presence passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed. Then I will remove my hand and you will see from behind, but my face you will not, will not be seen. And we do give thanks to God for his word to us. One of Moses' conversations with God. The children of Israel had yet disappointed God, yet again. And it's clear here that God is pleased with Moses. And he calls Moses his friend. But we see here, Moses doesn't get carried away with that. But his calling is to lead the people. And he's not going to move one step forward unless God goes with them all. And he speaks these words. And remember that this nation is your own people. He speaks his word. He speaks God's promises back to him, which is such a powerful thing for us to do as well. God's promise, he will personally go with Moses. And Moses, and he says, Moses, I will give you rest and everything will be fine for you. Moses wants God's assurance that he will not just go with him, but with the whole people, and they will be led together. And he goes, if you don't personally go with us, then we're not moving from this place. We're, we're going to w- go together. And because of, and it just, that's a wonderful picture of persisting in prayer, and of intercessory prayer, of really keeping pressing in there and really believing. So the Lord says, I will indeed do what you have asked and I look favourably on you and I know you by name. We see here that prayer does make a difference and Brother David was speaking about this on uh, Tuesday night. This is the depth of relationship that God wants us to have with him. That we can have that close conversation, those conversations with God and we, as we read his word as we read it for ourselves as we hear it spoken and as we hear discuss it with other people maybe in Bible study or, or just sharing together that we can know that depth of God speaking into our lives at this stage Moses had got what he wanted he knew now that God was going to go with them all But he says, one more request. How powerful is that? He says, God, I want to see your glory. I want to see your power. I want more. I want more. That longing was there. Moses recognizes that he couldn't take one step forward without God going with him. But he wants to be totally, just receive God's fullness more and more. And he says, then show me your glorious presence. That's a wonderful prayer for us to pray, for God to show us his glorious presence. God is asking, uh, Moses is asking God for more. He's asking God for an abundance or overflowing of himself. And yes, he's experienced much of God in the past, but he wants more. How inspiring this is. When preparing this for today, I was asking myself, do I have that longing in my heart for more of God? Sometimes we can be satisfied with a snack when God wants to give us a big, big meal, but we're satisfied with where we're at. And I feel in some ways today, there is a a sense of being satisfied with very little. And God wants to give us so much more. 
and so often we're missing out because we're satisfied with the little we have. There's so much more that God wants us to know and, and experience. God has done everything possible so that we can have it all. Jesus paid the ultimate price for our sins and the way is open for us. God longs for us to ask that same question as Moses. Then show me your glory. When are the times when you feel that you have grown in your walk with God most? At times in the Bible studies that I was responsible for in First Lisburn, this question would come up, when have you grown most? And the general agreement always was, was in the difficult times, in the challenges. And I personally can agree with that myself. When we are faced with difficulties in life, we have a choice. Either we trust God or we don't. There's no middle ground there. I was diagnosed with breast cancer in May 2013. There was no sitting on the fence thinking, well, will I trust God or will I not? Or will I do it today and not tomorrow? I recognized my need for God's help. And I knew I couldn't do it without him. I journaled through that whole time. God constantly spoke into my life through his word. As I read the, God's word in the morning, or maybe a, a card would come through the post with a scripture that would just speak into my heart, or somebody would send a text, or so many ways. And sometimes the same scripture coming from many different directions. And it was so, so powerfully affirming that God was powerfully in control and that he would give me what I need. God wants to constantly speak his word. One of those scriptures was, math, uh, sorry, was Psalm 6 to 18, verse 6. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. How powerful is that? That deep assurance that God was there. Psalm 85, verse 8. I listen carefully to what the Lord is saying, for he speaks peace to his faithful people. God's word is true. There were ups and downs on this journey. And one of the hardest was when my niece, age 15, was diagnosed with a condition called myodysplasia and had to go through a bone marrow transplant in Bristol. She came home from Bristol and was doing sort of okay and then took infection and her immune system had not got built up from the transplant and she died in January 2014. Leah sent me a card after she had been diagnosed and when I was going for my surgery. And she wrote many scriptures, there were, the card was called Facing Your Giants. But she wrote many scriptures into that, a 15 year old, and she spoke God's word into my heart. Amen. And how powerful is that? In the midst of so much awfulness, God was at work. She had a real heart for God, a heart to walk in God's way. But we know she's with Jesus today. So much in life we don't understand. But through it all, God shows his presence and his power. Someday we may understand it, but we don't at the minute. I have seen God powerfully answer prayer for my family. As they have moved, especially my brother and his wife, moved through that difficult and hard grief. Again, many people supporting on the journey. And again, prayer was always so much part of that journey. I found in one of my journals a list 
of the day that I had my surgery, of all the people that had prayed that day for 15 minute slots. One, the, our General Assembly was on in Derry at that time, and the, the, our rep there, he had his wee section, and he went to the Peace Bridge and sat on the Peace Bridge and prayed for me. And a, a minister who used to be in First Lisbon came and joined him, and they prayed. How powerful is prayer? You know, there's, there's t the whole thing about, um, we've heard people say, I felt the power of prayer. I certainly felt the power of prayer as people prayed. What a powerful feeling that is to know that God is powerfully at work and he is working through his purposes. During that time, I uh, attended a local church, uh, the church actually I belong to now, um, and the first Sunday I ever went there, the Reverend Tom Wilson, who was the minister, was doing a series on Elijah. It got to the point where Elijah was taken to the brook and he talked about um, being set aside and all the rest and he gave us notes. I still have those notes. And I had underlined two sentences and um, obedience to the word of God in the face of seeming impossibilities leads to seeing miracles. And then the second was, was, and let God do his work in you. I really felt that sermon had been written for me. And God really used that very powerfully. And all the things that God used in such a powerful way. Um, it's just amazing to look back and see how God spoke his word and gave strength and gave courage. After a few months of recovery, after treatment, um, I knew it was time I wanted to go back to work, but I was a bit concerned and afraid that I might not be able to do full-time work and wouldn't have the energy for it. And I remember looking at the verses in Matthew 11, 29 and 30, um, and out of the message translation. And this is what I took as my mandate for going back to work. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the on forth rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. How powerful is that? It was things that very much changed for me. It wasn't me trying to sort out everything and do everything, but it was coming from a point of really allowing God to lead and use me rather than me doing it the other way around. I had to learn this lesson. I've had to learn this lesson over and over again. But I am so thankful to God for that experience because he has used it powerfully in my life. I wouldn't recommend it, but God has used it very, very powerfully. Just want to think for a few moments um, uh, to, th to think about a prayer in Ephesians. I know Dario referred to this last week, but I just want to use it as a way for us to really um, focus on going deeper with God. That lovely passage from Ephesians 3. Um, I'll read these, these words and then we can just have a wee, just meditate on them. And God wants us calling us deeper and deeper into him. When I think of the wisdom and scope of God's plan, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that out of his glorious unlimited resources, he will give you mighty inner strength through his Holy Spirit. And I pray that Christ will be more and more at home in your hearts as you trust in him. 
May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvellous love. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high and how deep his love really is. May you experience the love of Christ, that though it is so great you will never fully understand it. Then you will be filled with the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now glory be to God by his mighty power at work within us is able to accomplish infinitely more than we would ever dare to ask or hope. May he be given glory in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever through endless ages. Amen. Let's take a moment to pray. (coughs) Father God, we thank you tonight that you so long to come and flood us with your power. We recognise, Lord God, that so often we run out of resources. We thank you tonight that your resources are unlimited and you constantly give and give and give again. Thank you that you want to empower us with your inner strength through your Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, we want you tonight to be more and more at home in our hearts. We want you to be in permanent residence within us. We pray tonight, Lord Jesus, that our roots would go down deeper and deeper into you, into the soil of your marvellous love. That we would know the fullness of your love tonight. It's so high, so wide, so deep. Thank you for your promise that you can do far more than we can ask, think, or imagine. Come, Holy Spirit, come and touch us all afresh tonight. Jesus' powerful and wonderful name, we pray.